Hello people and um, welcome to another video. Uh, in this video I'm going to be giving you a, um, a kit loadout video. Hello people and welcome to another video. Um, in this video I'm going to be giving you a kit loadout of the lightweight gear that I used in my last series in Snowdonia and what I'm planning to use in my week long backpacking trip in Norway this year. Um, Got a couple of things to say beforehand. Um, basically, I've been sponsored for this trip by a couple of companies, which I'm really, really pleased about. And um, there's three companies, and all three have been extremely generous. Um, so I've got to kind of shout them out while I go through this, as well as throughout the trip. Um, so I'm, there are a couple of pieces of gear that I haven't paid for. Um, but basically, the reasoning behind it was obviously you all know. Um, well, if you've been watching me a long time, you all know that I'm really into my traditional kind of um, canvas and leather, heavy weight materials. You know, I'm a bit of a naturalist in that sense, um, and I really want to, I really want to get into backpacking. It's simple as that. Um, I, can't, I think the two kind of go hand in hand. Like I really enjoy the woodland bushcraft experience, but at the same time, I want to do some trips and I want to do some backpacking experiences. Like I said in a previous video, I've decided that I want to do all the national trails in this country. And you simply can't do that with all this cameras, heavyweight gear. It's, it's pretty it's pretty impossible, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I really need to just light on my load for Norway. So I contacted a couple of companies and um, a couple of them, well, they all got back to me. And they were really, um, really generous. I'm, I was really surprised. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take you through what I've been given, what I'm taking and the weights of stuff and hopefully you'll gain some experience of good things to take. I mean I've, I've been doing it a little bit now so I've got some experience and I kind of know the ins and outs and what works and what doesn't. Um, I'm nowhere near kind of like a hyperlight enthusiast who knows heavier say extreme grams but I have kind of got into it a little bit um, and I've been enjoying it you know I've really been enjoying it. Um, so yeah the three companies that I've been sponsored by for this Norway, Norway trip are Hyperloid Mountain Gear um, over the pond in the US, um, Crag Hopper, and Hennessy Hammocks. Um, they all um, got back to me and they were, like I said, very, very generous in what they sent me. So I'll get, get it all out, um, got it all laid out now for you, and I'll show you what I'm taking. So here's my new pack. This is not the same pack that I took to um, Snowdonia with me. Um, Billy's actually going to be using that pack in Norway so it is a really good pack but this is my um, Hyperlight Mountain Gear uh, it's the Windrider 55 it's a 55 litre pack I was a little bit dubious um, to accept this pack to begin with because I, I, it's a, it, is a, it, is a, it is a Hyperlight rucksack it's not um, a traditional kind of backpack that I'm used to with like a lid and zips and stuff it is just Basically a dry bag with straps and a, and, a, and, a, and a waist belt is basically what it is. Um, but I've tested it a little bit. I've, I've, you know, it's fully packed now. I've, I've tried it and it is really comfortable. And I do actually really like it now. And I'm really enjoying this feature. Um, so yeah, this is what they sent me. And it's crazy. I really didn't expect to be given something like this. Um, and I'm really, really pleased. I mean, the backpack that I was going to take was about one and a half kilograms. And this backpack is 70, 700 grams, I think, roughly. Um, so straight away, that saved me like basically a kilogram um, of weight on my back, which is insane. Um, but yeah, let's empty this, and I'll uh, I'll um, show you what's inside it. But yeah, it's basically just a dry bag, and it's I can't remember the material in a minute. I'm going to do a review on it, obviously, at the end, at, when I get back from Norway. But the material is fully waterproof, so you don't need to put a dry bag or anything inside it. But the important things inside are in dry bags, but for the, for the main part, you know, it's a solid piece of gear and it's not really going to get your stuff wet. Um, so yeah, um, once I've gone through Norway and stuff, you know, I'll tell them I'll give my full review and give them my thoughts and experiences with the rucksack, so uh, you can look forward to that one. Okay then folks, so for those of you have, who have been following me for a while, you will have noticed, you will notice this angle from a few of the videos, we've done a couple of these uh, kit load of videos now, but I know people enjoy them and people like to see what I'm using um, for trips and stuff, so here we go, this is all the lightweight stuff that I'll be taking to Norway with me and when I say lightweight, it's it's not ultra light, it's as light as I can possibly get at the minute um, but it is reasonably 
um, lightweight, considering we've been walking for a week. Anyway, so I'm going to point to the old things and then we're going to zoom in to specific bags and stuff and we'll open them up and have a, look, a closer look at what's inside them. So, starting top left are just my straps for the hammock, which is there, just the straps. There we've got some PVC plastic 12 inch stakes. I like to use those, especially in places like, well they're quite new, but I bought them particularly for Norway because I knew it was going to be quite mossy ground. Um, anywhere where you go camping and it's kind of pine forest, the ground doesn't tend to be so hard. Um, so pegs tend to pull out. So a good 12 inch stake, you can't really go wrong there. You, you pretty much, um, you, you've got some good strength there for if there's a storm or anything, you're not gonna get your tent, tent, tent pegs pulling it. Um, that little thing there is just my speaker. We like to have a little bit of music from time to time. These two things here, that's my journal. I've um, started to keep journals when I'm going on my trips now. Um, I think it's a really good way of trying to remember the trip a lot better. I mean, I video a lot and I keep a lot of footage. Um, I mean, the things that you'll see of the Norway videos aren't necessarily all the stuff I've recorded. I don't always put everything onto YouTube. Um, so I do capture a lot of footage and I do take a lot of photos, but it never quite grasps everything. So keeping a journal log every single day um, it just it helps you to look back in several years' time and you remember the finer details, which is pretty cool. And next to that is just my Kindle. I like to read on the go. Um, this here, that's the, the travel wallet. We'll zoom into that now and just have a closer look. Okay, so this is my travel wallet that I always take on trips with me. And it's just a way of keeping all of my information that I need to get to the actual location together and organised. Uh, it's got a pocket on the front here, which is where I tend to put the current um, ticket or the current uh, boarding pass or the current information that I need for the next stage of the trip. Um, and then inside is just a series of pockets, a, a insurance card, driving licence, um, credit card normally goes in there, um, passport, and then in the back here I have all the tickets and stuff um, filed in the order that they're going to be needed. And on the right hand side I have um, a series of maps that I need to be able to find shops and such and such in different towns, blah 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 blah. And then in the back, there's a zip pocket where I just put all the receipts and stuff from when I purchase things or whatever. So just store it all in there. It's just a way of keeping really well organised. And then there's a, a red dry bag, which as soon as I get to the actual camping, but as soon as I get to the, the part of the trip where I'm going to be camping or hiking or canoeing, this goes in this dry bag, it's locked up. It's put in the bottom of the pack and doesn't come out until I need it again and it just keeps it nice and safe and dry. Um, it's, just a, it's just a safe way and an organised way of keeping yourself sorted. Next up we've got the Maxpedition organiser. Again that's the one thing that I tend to keep all my little bits and shits in. Uh, we'll zoom into that now and take a closer look at what's in there. Okay so this is the Maxpedition organiser. Yeah, nothing special about it really, I mean everybody's seen these but Inside, this is what I keep in here. Uh, we've got pen and pencil. This is for my journaling, for some sketching and actually writing. It's also good just to keep these in general if you need making notes along the way. Uh, just keep my spork in there because it's just somewhere easy to keep it so I'm not going to lose it. And behind there, I've got a charger for the, the speaker. Um, spare memory card for the camera, spare battery for the torch. Behind there is the iPod. Uh, behind here, I've got several several chargers. Got two two chargers for the camera. Uh, but I, I I use the everything I own uses the mini no micro SD charging port apart from the iPod. Uh, everything I buy, I make sure it uses the same charger, so I haven't got to carry an array of different charging adapters apart from the iPod. But I'm looking at actually changing that out at some point. Anyway, so we have two of those because one is non. Two is one and one is none. Uh, if that broke, if one of those broke on me and I only had one with me, I would be in some serious trouble in terms of keeping everything paired up. Um, so yeah, carry two of those. iPod charger behind there. And then we've got the through night T10 with the, the lightsaber attachment that I like to call it. Uh, I love that thing, I like to hang it on my hammock. Lighter, and then normally I've got my pen knife in here, but I don't know where I've put that at the minute. Where is it? Oh, that's obviously in the... Uh, that's shrink wrapped at the minute with the lap lander. That's where that is. Uh, next up, we've got a walking pole. Nothing special about that. I like to carry that 
Uh, I don't really use it that much. I mean, some people could argue it's kind of dead weight because I don't walk with it that often. But when I do, I do really notice the benefits. Uh, I particularly get it when I get it out when I'm crossing streams or when I'm crossing boggy areas to give me that extra third leg of balance. Um, going down hills is particularly good. It just helps you stop sliding and stuff. Uh, I know when I was in Snowdonia, I was walking down some really, some really slippy slopes in the rain. Like that thing saved my ankles. Uh, and also, I use, quite, I use it quite a lot to um, hold my tarp up as well. That re works really well. Save looking around trying to find a stick all the time, and then having to cover the end of the stick so you don't get so it doesn't damage the top of your tarp. That walking pole works perfectly for that. So it, I do think it's worth carrying, but I do think it's worth probably getting a lighter option because that one isn't. It's only a cheap high gear one, so it is pretty heavy actually. Um, that thing there, that's my ultra pod. I use that. I never carry a big tripod anymore because that thing can strap it under trees. It's incredible little tripod. Um, worth its weight in gold. Uh, which way should we go? Should we carry on down here? Uh, compass, nothing special there. That's my power gen. A lot of people keep asking me how do I what do I use to, after the Snowdonia trip, people keep asking me what's that what's that charger you use? I have two of them. They're both the same, they're power gens. That's the company, that's the make of them. Uh, and that particular model is the twelve 1200 milliamp um, capacity. I don't think they actually make that model anymore, but if you go for a Perigen, they're good quality. But there's, there's tons of other um, external battery um, suppliers out there. Um, just find one and uh, look at the battery on your phone or whatever you want to be charging. Look how many milliamps um, it holds and then go from there. Like my, For example, my phone is a 1000 milliamp battery. Um, that's got 12,000. That's got yeah. That's got 12,000 milliamps. So I can technically charge my phone about 12 times ish. But I have cameras and iPods and all kinds of other things to charge. Um, next up, sunglasses. They're pretty important. I don't know whether it's going to be sunny or rainy in Norway, but I'm definitely going to take them because it is sunny. My eyes do not cope with um, the glare of the sun very well at all. So sun sunglasses are very useful. Um, there's the map of the area we're going. Crocs. Could argue they're dead weight, but I know from experience that they are going to be a lifesaver. When you've been in your walking boots or walking shoes all day, it's just nice to be able to take them off and put bare feet into Crocs and just air them out, dry your feet out. And they're really nice as well for getting in and out of hammock, in, in and out of your hammock, um, so you don't have to keep tying your shoelaces all the time. So once I get to camp, I'll slap the Crocs on and I'll be away. Um, just nice and comfortable. And I also think they're possibly the best shoes for that kind of thing. Like You can wear flip-flops or sandals, but flip-flops aren't that great, they kind of fall off your feet, I particularly hate flip-flops, I, I hate having things in between my toes. Um, Crocs are pretty much shoes, they protect your feet, they hold onto your feet as well because they've got the back section around your ankle. Uh, and they've, got, they've actually got really great grip as well, so when you climb up rocks and stuff you don't slip or you don't fall over. Um, next up we've got the um, Crag Hopper Kiwi Light Waterproof, um, that I got sent from Crag Hopper. I actually, really, I actually really, really like that waterproof. Um, it's kind of my go-to waterproof now. Um, I really like the colour of it. I really like the style of it. Um, it's not an ultra-light waterproof. It's kind of just like an average waterproof, which is pretty lightweight. Um, but it's actually a really good waterproof. I particularly like the, the hood. It's got like a, 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 a solid flat piece in the hood, which protects your face if it is raining. Um, I really like that. Uh, next up is my Hennessy Hammock. So I use that all through the Snowdonia videos, absolutely fantastic little bit of kit. Got a few modifications I like to do to it, but at the minute, absolutely loving it. Um, just wrapped up in its uh, snake skins there, I haven't got the pouch for it. Uh, it's just in its snake skin, and then tied up by itself. Uh, next up, this thing here, that's just a rubble bag. Um, just heavy duty rubble bag. Uh, that I use for, I use it for a, a variety of things actually. It's kind of like, it's my, kind of my sit mat if it's wet. It's also... Um, what I use to put under my hammock to put my things down on the floor so I can keep organised better. The worst thing you want to do is start putting all your things all on the ground and you, you'll lose things very quickly. Have something to put your equipment onto. Um, and also, I've used it for a, uh, as a dry bag in the past if, if my dry bag broke or something like that. Uh, next up, we've got kind of a high gear Nalgene type bottle, 500 mil. Works perfectly with the Soya Mini filter, which I've missed. Um, this, uh, the Soya Mini, I've got a 500 milliliter bag, so what I do is I'll fill the bag in the stream, filter it out into the bottle, then I'll fill the bag again, then I can walk back to camp with a whole litre of water. 
Um, so the, Nal the Nalgene tile bottle is for clean water and the bag is for the dirty water. Uh, or the untreated water shall we say. Uh, here is another bag with bits in. Uh, just some random. It's kind of the, the, it's a random bag. I can't remember the word now. But that's the main one where all the important stuff is. And this is kind of the secondary bag which all the bits and, bits and pieces go in that I'm not necessarily going to use all the time. So we'll open that now and have a closer look. Okay, so inside this drawstring bag, we have the we have the through night torch, head torch. I haven't used this properly yet. It's going to be the first one for this trip, but I'm impressed with it so far. Pretty heavy duty, but it's absolutely solid. I really like it. It's a very powerful torch, that is. Uh, a bit of jute twine, which should be in the other pouch, really. Uh, and like I said, this is just a pouch with just oddments in that aren't nearly needed very often. It's more when I get to camp this this pack comes out. Uh, you've got the pouch there with the tobacco with the um pipe pipe in and there's the pipe tobacco. This is just a bit of a pouch which the string should be in and I have a couple of extra bits of cordage that you might need when camp at some point. Uh, odd candle. I'm not going to be taking that with me actually that's what will come out. Uh, just a seal lock bag in there we've got some duct tape. You never know, you always need duct tape when you're out. You might not think you do, but I always find a use for duct tape. Uh, Vaseline, earplugs, just in case. I, I only carry these, I very rarely use the, the earplugs, uh, ear but I just carry them just in case uh, I go camping with somebody that snores really loud, because I cannot sleep when people snore. Uh, and then we've got Nordic Summer for mosquito repellent. And then in the bottom, we've got um, just an extra little pouch there with a lighter in and some matches. Very rarely, well, never use those, they're just back up, they're just sitting there just in case. And then a mosquito net. Um, next to that, we've got my two tools that I'll be taking. I'm just taking a pen knife for my cutting option and then my Laplander saw so I can cut some firewood. They are currently wrapped in shrink wrap or um, cling film. A lot of people ask me, how do you get your tools and your axes and stuff over to other countries? It's very, very simple. Just pack them in your in your hold luggage, you obviously don't want to take it in your hand luggage, it's got to go in the hold luggage and then it's just appreciated by the, the staff if you just kind of wrap them up and label them that they are sharp, they're a sharp object so just be careful or warning sign on them so if for any reason that your bag does get opened by uh, airport staff they'll immediately see that you know that is a protected item and they're not going to get harmed by it the last thing you want is someone opening your bag and getting cut on a knife or something like that uh, so yeah they're just wrapped up and that's just how you do it um, they haven't got a problem with that, that's fine uh, blah, blah, blah. Where should we go? Next up here, we've got my uh, washing kit. We'll open that up and have a closer look inside there. Okay, so for a wash kit, it's actually very simple to stay clean outdoors. Some people carry a ridiculous amount of stuff to keep clean. You know, they carry soap, they carry shampoo, they carry this and that, and loads of liquids and deodorant. And I've literally, I've seen people carry like a kind of deodorant. You just don't need it. Like I say, you're going to get to a point where you smell that bad anyway it's pointless so just keep clean and don't worry about what you smell like because it's going to get to a point where you smell anyway so it doesn't really matter and so what i carry in here is i carry a cube of soap literally you take your normal soap from your kit from your your bathroom cut a chunk off it put it in one of these mesh bags and that works as a scrubber so you can scrub yourself down and um, it works as like a sponge but it also means you can hang it up in camp to let it dry off so it doesn't get everything wet inside your bag and but you don't need to carry a whole a whole uh, bar of soap with you, it's just irrelevant, uh, it's just dead weight, you just need that, I mean, that'll, I've had that one in there for ages actually, um, I've used that, one, that was the one I took to Sweden, it just lasts, I mean, soap doesn't wear down very quickly. Um, then we've got a microfiber towel, that's quite a big one actually, you know, that is actually, uh, oh, it's probably like a, a metre and a half by just under a metre squared, not squared, but you know, um, it's quite a big one, you can get smaller ones, but I do like to go wild swimming when I go on big trips like Sweden. We do quite a lot of quite a bit of swimming, and when I go to Norway, I plan to do quite a bit of swimming as well. So I do like a nice big tail so I can dry my whole body. Uh, and then we just have toothbrush, which I saw in half to save a bit of weight. And it's actually, it's more to do with the fact they fit in this bag. If it's a full toothbrush, it wouldn't actually fit in. And then a small tooth, of, small tube of toothpaste. Um, I bought this ages ago, and I just refill it with normal toothpaste now. I just squirt it in. And it goes in there for you, it's just nice and small. And then the one thing that I need to add on to this is I'll I'll take some baby wipes with me because they're um 
they're a nice quick wash. What I do is I have a proper wash in the evening and then in the morning I have a baby wipe wash. So I take two baby wipes per day. Um, so I'll take a Ziploc bag like this one that my, the toilet rolls in and I'll just put a load of uh, baby wipes in there. And that's my that's my hygiene kit. You know, it's very simple. Um, there's not a lot to it, but it, you know, it, it enables me to keep clean, brush my teeth, and that's all you need. You know, with a bar of soap, you can do everything you need to do. So simple as that. Next up, just got toilet roll in a, a Ziploc bag. I just take one toilet roll for a week. That I might do. Um, I won't need any more than that. Next up here, we've got my cook kit. We'll open that up, take a closer look. Okay, so this is the cooking system I'm using currently. I'm actually quite happy with this cooking system. So I'll just take you through it. Uh, it's in this pouch. Inside this pouch, I have the Optimus Terra Solo cook kit. Oh, there's dirt everywhere. Uh, I like this cook kit because you can cook in the one container and then you can drink out of the other container so you haven't got to carry any other utensils. And also the lid is very good for um, the efficiency of the stove. Next up we have the windshield which I bought from Paul Stokes um, on eBay, a good friend of mine. I'll put the link in the description for this product. Um, and then we've just got a gas stove in there which is in the mesh. It's in the mesh bag so it doesn't um, wear away the pot inside. Um, but it's just, that is just a standard gas stove that I bought from Go Outdoors a couple of years ago. That is the one thing that I really do want to upgrade. I want to kind of go to meths, um, but we're still working on that one. Uh, so yeah, that's a nice compact plus cook system. It all goes in that one, um, that one pot, and that's why I like that. It's just small and it all comes together nicely. Here we've got my um, Hennessy hammock tarp. Um, I am using the 70D tarp, which is the larger model. Um, I could have had the smaller one, but I figured the larger one would be better, just in case. If it does, get, if it is bad weather and I need to hunker down, I'll have plenty of space under that tarp. Um, to kind of to just kind of live happily while it's raining. The last thing you want is in a massive rainstorm, you're in a tiny little tarp and you're just getting wet. You don't want that. Um, this one here, this is my new sleeping bag, my summer bag. I've got a, a, a mountain hardware lamina uh, 45, I think it is. It's the summer bag, uh, and it's in a hyperlight mountain gear Cuban fiber uh, drawstring bag. I've got a couple of those bags. I've got that one there, that one there. And that one there. They're waterproof bags. They're not watertight bags because they haven't got the. They're not a dry bag. They're just a drawstring. But um, together with the Hyperlite rucksack, which is waterproof, nothing. None of my kit's going to get wet. The odds of a little bit of rain or any, the odds of any water getting into that little tiny hole at the top are very, very slim. So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, so yeah, that's the sleeping bag I'm using in that pack. I haven't got the sleeping bag in a in a in a compress in a compression in a compression bag because basically that bag there is too big for the sleeping bag so if I put it in there the, the sleeping bag is going to be able to mould to the bottom of my, my rucksack perfectly whereas if you have it in a compressed bag you've, you've, you've made it into a, a, a tight um, shape you made it into a, a solid shape which isn't going to mould to the rucksack so if you have it in a loose bag it will mould to the rucksack and fill the bottom of the bag perfectly uh, what's next? we have the Crag Hopper, compressed light jacket, absolutely love this jacket, I can't tell you how much I am impressed with it. Um, it's basically a synthetic down um, jacket. I carry it with me, I don't hike in it, I carry it with me for when I get to camp and when the temperature drops at night, pop that on and you are toasty, toasty warm. I absolutely friggin' love this jacket so much. Um, I also sleep in this jacket, it's just a really comfortable kind of sleeping bag jacket to sleep in. Uh, it works perfectly with the waterproof as well, like they, they kind of go together hand in hand. Um, next up here we've just got the odd bits of clothing that I'm going to be taking with me in one of the Hyperlite Cuban Fibre stuff sacks. Um, I'll open that up now and show you. Uh, this is just the extra clothes I carry. I don't carry any real spare clothes. I don't have two sets of clothes like some people do. The clothes that I go in I wear to the very end and I wash them as I go. Simple as that. But what I do carry is I have a fleece hat I always carry a hat now uh, after watching a video of Paul Kirtley because it's actually surprising how often you actually put this on if you have it with you. At night it does drop chilly and so it's, even in the summer it's worth putting on sometimes um, and in the morning you know it's, it's, it can be quite cold in summer summer morning so it is just worth having um, so I always carry that now. 
Uh, and again, just some fingerless gloves, only thin ones. And again, it's very surprising how often you'll put them on if you do have them on you instead of suffering in the cold. Um, so yeah, sleeping socks, just have some, a pair of uh, wool socks. These are the crag hopper ones that I got sent. Very happy with these, nice and thick. I wasn't originally going to hike. I was originally going to hike with these ones, but it's summer and it's going to be too warm, so I'm going to use these as my sleeping socks. Um, and I've already used them in Snowdonia, and they work quite well. They're quite nice and warm, nice and thick. Um, I do have a. The, the, the only spare clothes I do carry is a spare pair of underwear, because um, you change change through halfway through the week, and spare pair of hiking socks again to change through halfway through the week. And then. Other than that, that's not going to go with me. That's my top. Um, a wool buff. It's just useful. You use it all the time. Either for a hat to shield you from the sun, or to put around your neck at night, or if it's particularly cold in the daytime, you can wear that. And that's there all the clothes I will take with me. You don't need any more than that. Don't take any spare clothes in terms of extra clothing. It's just dead weight that you don't need. And... It gets to a point when you're outdoors where you smell bad enough as it is with sweat and smoke and all sorts. So no matter what you do, you're going to smell anyway. So just keep regular, keep washing regularly. You know, wash once a day and wash your clothes every other day or so, and you'll keep relatively clean um, and un unsmelling. <laughs> Next up, we've got a first aid kit. Just a personal first aid kit with odd bits, a few bandages, plasters, uh, paracetamol. Um, some like dietary tablets, just bits and pieces for me, just in case, and um, like hay fever tablets, things like that. Uh, and then we have a group first aid kit which Matt is carrying, which has got like the serious kind of blood clot materials in case any of us, God forbid, um, do get into some serious trouble. Uh, and then we've got the Hennessy Hammock sleep mat. Um, actually, really impressed with that thing. Um, it's really lightweight, I think it weighs just over 200 grams. And it actually clips inside the hammock so it doesn't move at night. I know some people use like a standard sleep mat, but it kind of I've slept in them before with a normal sleep mat and they just fly around and you end up with the thing on the floor in the middle of the night or you're hanging off it and you're not very warm. That thing actually attaches into the hammock so it stays there when you're sleeping which is great. And then finally we've got that big dry bag there which has got all my uh, food in for the week. It's actually empty at the minute because all my food's downstairs um, but there is a video that I'm going to be uploading at the same time as this one just going through all the food that I'm carrying and how to create it. So that's it for the kind of overview. Uh, so let's go back to the rucksack. So this is how I'm going to load the outside of the rucksack while carrying it in next week. Uh, on this side we've just got the tent pegs. They're, they're in there pretty securely with the, with the straps. Reason being is I don't want these spikes poking against and wearing away on the inside of the pack. And also they're going to be one of the first things I need to get to when I get to camp. And at the bottom of there, I've also got the webbing straps for the hammock because, again, they're going to be the first things I need to get to when I get to camp. On the front, I've put the Crocs. Um, main reason being is they're a really awkward shape to try and fit in the rucksack, so I may as well put them on the, out put them on the outside. Um, if it is looking like the weather's going to be bad, I will change it out and put the Crocs on the inside and put the waterproof on the outside so I can get to the waterproof um, quickly if I need to. But the reason I've done this as well is because it works quite well. Not only all the crocs are there and take up the space but the crocs themselves are still hollow so I can put things in them and um, for example I've got my sunglasses in those so I can get to my sunglasses still so not only have I got those in there it's not taking up all the space I can still put things in the crocs for easy access um, and then in between the crocs are, is my walking pole which is attached at the bottom and if we've got the axe loop or the walking pole loop whatever you want to call it and that's secured by this strap that goes around the outside of the pack and stop that from falling anywhere. Turning the pack around, and you can see it hasn't got any kind of aeration system. The idea is for comfort, you have your, uh, your water bladder in there, which is in there, and when that's filled up, you've got cushioning for your back. Um, and you've got your grab handle there, and you've got your straps, sternum strap with the whistle on the, um, on the clip, and then you've got your your Wallace belt, which I'm actually quite impressed, I like this Wallace belt. The, uh, the pockets are nice and little, little chunky pockets. And in there I'm going to put my lunch and my trail mix in either one of those. That's it, I'm going to load that out. And then on the top you've got this extra strap as well, which you can put your extra old thing in. Which, what I'm actually going to do, I think it's going to work nicely. I'm going to put my tripod in there. 
so that I can grab that from above my head to use when necessary. So that's how I'm going to load that out. So there you have it, that's everything I'm going to be taking to Norway with me, that's all my kit load out. And I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's going to help you maybe make some decisions on changing your kit out maybe or something like that. Um, again a, a big thank you to the three companies, Crack Harper, Hennessy Hammocks and Hyperlight Mountain Gear. Um, I'm very very grateful and I'm very very fortunate and that I've been able to receive some products from these companies. Um, I don't want people thinking that I'm not grateful. Um, or that I think that I deserve them because I don't. Uh, I'm just very, very grateful, and it's enabled me to really lighten my load to be able to do some this this trip and a lot more trips in the future. I've got a lot of lightweight hiking trips that I want to carry out, and it's going to enable me to do that um, where before it would have been a little bit more difficult, definitely more difficult actually. It would have been very expensive. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very fortunate. So thank you to those three companies, and I will do them justice by doing thorough, honest reviews of the products when I've got back and I've thought about. The, the good and the bad of each thing uh, and I'll give you my honest opinions on what I think um, but so far I'm really impressed with everything um, so yeah that's it for this video uh, the next one there will be another video um, explaining all the food layout and how I've dehydrated my own meals that's going to come after this video um, and I'll upload these at pretty much the same time and then I'm off to Norway so thanks for watching and I'll see you again very very soon